Planet Earth is big. It has to be to provide a home for nearly 7 billion people. Oceans, rivers, lakes, and other bodies of water make up almost three quarters of planet Earth. And when we consider how big the Earth is, that's a lot of water. Water is what makes life possible. When we look for signs of life on other planets, we first look for signs of water. Every living thing needs water to survive, from the tiniest microorganism to an Antarctic blue whale. Water is the reason we're alive and here today, learning together. As humans, we need water for a number of reasons. Firstly, water makes sure all our organs work properly by delivering oxygen to all parts of our body. Water hydrates us so we can feel well rested and comfortable. You know when you play football outside and start to sweat? That's your body using water to make sure you don't get too hot. When we eat food, we use saliva, or our spit, to make sure we can swallow and properly digest our food. We need water to flush out waste from our bodies, like when we use the loo. We also need water to cook our food so that we can remain strong and healthy. Think about pasta. We need boiling water to cook pasta. And what about when we make a warm bowl of soup on a cold day? We need water to make it. We also use water to clean our homes and our schools. When we spill something, we can use water to clean up the mess. In our bathrooms, we use water to brush our teeth and to clean ourselves after a long day playing outside. That's just a few of the ways we use water. We need to keep drinking water to make sure our bodies can support us to run, eat, and be happy. We need water to cook our food and clean our homes. These are the wonders of water. But how do we get this water? Where does it come from? All water on Earth is part of something called the water cycle. The water cycle explains how water moves around our Earth in different forms, including as a solid, liquid, and gas. The water cycle occurs when water from lakes, rivers, and oceans heats up and rises, or evaporates, into the atmosphere. Plants also contribute to the water cycle. When plants sweat out water from their stems and leaves, water also goes into the atmosphere. This is called transpiration. The water in the atmosphere becomes a gas, travelling higher and higher up into the sky until it becomes liquid in a rain or snow cloud. This is called condensation. Then, when the cloud is full and heavy, the water falls back down to earth in the form of snow or rain, sometimes even hail. This is called precipitation. The water falls into lakes, rivers, and soil and underground and into the oceans. The cycle then starts up again when water rises from these bodies of water back into the air. An ecosystem is all living things in nature, such as in a river or a lake. In an ecosystem, all living things rely on one another and work together to create a suitable place to live. All living things create a wonderful community that allows them to live happily and also makes our lives better. How's that? When we drink water from rivers, lakes, and even streams, that water has passed through fish, tree branches, bacteria, all of which can clean the water from pollutants and other things we wouldn't want to drink. Even though the earth is made up of 71% of water, we can't drink most of this water because it's too salty. I'm sure many of you have gone swimming in the ocean and tasted the saltiness of the sea. Human beings need water without salt because our body cannot have too much salt, otherwise we'll get sick. It costs a lot of money and uses a lot of energy to take salt out of seawater, and so most of the water we drink comes from freshwater sources like rivers, where there isn't that much salt. So where does the water in our homes come from? In the UK, a lot of the water we drink, or use to cook and clean, comes from lakes, rivers, or reservoirs, which are lakes used for storing water. Some of the water we use comes from water under the ground, like from an aquifer, which is a layer of rock under the ground that is a bit like a sponge that holds water. Water from rivers, lakes, and aquifers isn't salty, which is why we're able to use it. 
Water companies across the UK take water from rivers, lakes, reservoirs and underground and clean the water to make sure it is safe for us to use and drink. This means cleaning out tree branches and waste, as well as making sure there's no dangerous germs or bacteria in the water that can make us ill. Once all the water is clean and safe for us to drink and use, it is stored in a man-made lake called a reservoir. Then, a system of underground pipes and pumps brings water from the reservoir into our home. Isn't that amazing? In the UK, we're lucky to be able to access clean water so easily. In other countries, access to clean water may be difficult because people don't have underground pipes and pumps like we do, or they don't have the ability to clean water as quickly as we do. Sometimes, even within a city in some other countries, communities have different access to clean water, where richer people are able to access clean water and poorer neighbourhoods are unable to. While we've mostly been talking about drinking water, let's think about how water we are unable to drink is also important to life on Earth. Salt water in oceans is home to many living things that are very important in making planet Earth a home for us. For example, plants and tiny living things called plankton in the ocean breathe out oxygen, which we also need to breathe. In fact, ocean ecosystems contribute to over half of the oxygen we need to live. This is just one reason why oceans are so incredible. It's amazing that water, in all its forms, helps all life on Earth in so many ways. Unfortunately, like much of the Earth, Water systems are suffering due to the things that people do that are bad for the planet. So let's start with something called pollution. Pollution means putting something into the environment that shouldn't be there or that is harmful to the environment. There are many types of pollution. So let's start with plastic pollution. People throw away a lot of stuff and often that stuff is plastic. You know when you buy food from the shop and it comes in a plastic bag? Or when you buy some juice and it comes in a plastic bottle? What happens to all this plastic? Well, often it is thrown away to sit in a landfill, a place where waste is collected. And sometimes it is thrown in rivers where pieces of plastic make their way to the sea, affecting plants and animals in both marine and river ecosystems when they eat plastic or get stuck in it. An organization called Earthwatch Institute made a list of the top 10 plastic items most commonly found in rivers. Do you want to hear what the top 5 are? Do you want to maybe take a guess? Alright, take one minute and guess. While I read out the list, have a think about whether or not you use these things and how you may throw them away. Alright, drumroll please! The most common plastic item found polluting rivers is the plastic bottle. Number two, food wrappers like crisp packets. Number three, cigarette butts. Number four, takeaway containers from ordering food like when we get burgers or kebabs. Number five, cotton buds you use to clean your ears that have plastic sticks. Are you surprised by any of this? Another way we contribute to polluting rivers is through what we pour down the kitchen sink or what we flush down the loo. For example, lots of people pour cooking oil down the kitchen sink or flush wet wipes down the toilet. All of this contributes to a big lump of waste that blocks pipes and makes it really difficult for water companies to deal with the wastewater from our homes. We call these big lumps of waste fatbergs, like an iceberg but made of fat. Fatty McFatberg is a fatberg that was found under the streets in London. It was over twice the length of two Wembley football pitches. Part of it is now on display in the Museum of London. There are also other types of pollution that affect rivers, seas and lakes. There are many factories around the world that make all the plastic, cars, clothes and other items that we are encouraged to buy. Farmers can also use chemicals on the things they grow to make them grow bigger and faster. Sometimes, dangerous chemicals from these factories and farms find their way into rivers, lakes and oceans, which also affects all the living things in that ecosystem, including people. For example, in the United States, in a town called Flint, 
River pollution from car factories nearby has contributed to dangerous drinking water which has affected the health of people living in the town. It has taken the government a long time to fix the issue. People living in Flint have had to deal with this very serious problem for over six years. It is important we understand that access to clean water can differ amongst countries and even communities in the same country. Sometimes poorer communities or black or indigenous communities are treated differently by governments and may not be able to access clean water as easily as other communities are able to do. Wherever we can, we need to help these communities by speaking about unequal access to water around the world and making sure other people know that this is happening. Our society at the moment relies on oil and gas to power our cars and planes, to run factories, to heat our homes and our water, and for many other things. Oil and gas are found in very specific parts of the world, so often ships are used to transport oil across the world. And this is where another type of pollution comes in, oil spills. This type of pollution occurs when ships carrying oil spill the oil into oceans. Have you ever heard of this happening? There have been several really big oil spills in the past. When oil is spilled into oceans, it is very hard to clean up. Birds and fish living in or near oceans can become covered in oil, which harms their feathers and skin. Our use of oil and gas affects oceans in another way. When we use oil and gas, we release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Too many greenhouse gases contributes to the warming of our planet, which impacts people, plants, animals, and all ecosystems. Ocean ecosystems, for example, are affected by warming temperatures. When the Earth's temperature increases, it means oceans are getting warmer. When ocean water gets warmer, oceans expand and they can flood cities and villages on the coasts. Warming oceans can also affect fish, plants, and animals in the ocean. Have you heard of the Great Barrier Reef? The Great Barrier Reef is in Australia and is home to 25% of all known marine species. It is so big, you can see it from space. The Great Barrier Reef is made up of coral reefs which provide shelter for different fish and marine animals. As temperatures rise and the ocean gets warmer, coral reefs will be affected and won't be able to act as habitats or homes for fish. Because we are releasing so many greenhouse gases, the ocean is becoming more acidic, which means it is becoming a difficult place for plants and animals to live, like the Great Barrier Reef and all the fish that rely on it. We've just explored what the water cycle and water systems are and how it is changing due to human activity. Next, let's discuss what we can do. How can we protect our water systems?